Welcome into the Commander Support. I am your host, Jack Sperry, and today we got a bunch of great uh, Commanders news and rumors to cover right here on the Commander's Report. First up today, three new Brandon Ayuk trade ideas have hit the presses from CBS Sports. I'm going to react to all three, and then I'll provide my idea of what I would want a Brandon Ayuk trade to look like if it happens. And then, you know, there's some worry out there that Jaden Daniels, maybe, you know, he's not quite as sharp as you want your starting quarterback to be after his clip went viral from Hard Knocks this week. I'm going to let you guys know why I'm not worried about it, and I'm going to break down the play that he said was his favorite. But before we get into it today, we are so close to passing up the Ravens rundown here at Chat Sports moving up the power rankings here at Chat Sports. We're less than 100 subscribers away. So if we can get 100 new subscribers on today's show, that would move mountains for me because guess what, man? I made a bet with Ravens Rundown host Tyler Jones, a steak dinner, that we would pass him before the start of training camp. So, of course, you know, Commander's Training Camp is right around the corner here, so we got to make it happen fast. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now. And listen, man, I need the new viewers to help me out here. All right. I know there's a lot of very loyal people that are already subscribed to this channel who are watching this video, but they're already subscribed. I need the new people, the people watching us for the first time, second time, haven't clicked that subscribe button yet. We're counting on you guys. Help us pass the Ravens rundown right now by clicking that subscribe button. Now let's get into uh, the Brandon Ayuk portion of today's show because I think it's very interesting. CBS Sports put out an article uh, earlier today, actually, which proposed three new Brandon Ayuk trade options for the commanders to consider. And the first one is pretty bland and pretty boring. It's just straight up trading a first round pick next year for Brandon Ayuk. Okay. I mean, keep in mind, commanders would have to pay Brandon Ayuk $30 million per season on his next contract uh, to make this happen. So not only are you giving up $30 million a year for a wide receiver, but you're also giving away a first round pick. And let me tell you guys this right now, there is no way that I am doing this if I am GM Adam Peters, okay? Because, I mean, you got to build the offensive line. you got to build the trenches still. There's still plenty of holes to address on this commander's team. And it's very it's, – I'm not going to say it's likely, but it's definitely a possibility that this team isn't very good this year, and that draft pick is going to be super high. So I think the 49ers would take that deal if the commanders offered it to them right now. But if I'm Adam Peters, the commander's GM, there's no – way I'm giving up my first rounder in 2025. Second trade idea I think is a little bit better. So you give up Deami Brown, a uh, second rounder and a fourth rounder next year in exchange for Brandon Ayuk. And th in this scenario, you get to keep your first round pick. And if, you know, uh, giving away Deami Brown is all I need to do to make that first round pick turn into a second and a fourth, I'm taking that deal. Okay. I think this is a lot better. Maybe it's not the most ideal package for the commanders in the world, but if they really want Brandon Ayuk, this is certainly something that I would accept as a Commanders fan. Then we get to uh, the third trade idea here, which is actually a three-team trade. Huge voice crack, my apologies. Then we got Brandon Ayuk, of course, going to the Commanders. 49ers receive a second-round pick from the Commanders and Cortland Sutton from the Broncos. And then the Broncos get a third-round pick from the Commanders next year. So the Commanders would not have a second or third-round pick in this scenario plus Jamison Crowder, who's probably going to be your starting punt returner this year. So listen, man, I think it's an interesting idea. I think three-team trade ideas are always fun and interesting, but I don't think there's any way the commanders would do this, man. Like seriously, like giving up your second and third round picks in next year's draft to make this happen, I don't think there's any way that happens, man. I think that this team needs to build through the draft in future years. And if you're giving up, you know, day two draft capital like this trade idea suggests, I just don't think that's worth a guy like Brandon Ayuk, and I think it's relatively unrealistic. Now, what I would probably offer here, and I've actually said this on the show, I've, I've actually had this trade offer on the show a couple of times here. What I would offer is a second-round pick in Jahan Dotson, because if you make this trade happen, you're not giving up a first-round pick. You still have a dynamic wide receiver duo in Brandon Ayuk and Terry McLaurin. As uh, 49ers get a receiver to help them out this season, I think this makes the most sense for both sides, and I think it's relatively fair uh, given the circumstances. So let me know down there in the comments section, out of these four trade ideas four, that would land Brandon Ayuk with the Washington Commanders, which one are you taking? Are you taking idea number one, where you're, draft, where you're take, giving up a first round pick, uh, going and giving up Deami Brown, and then a second and a fourth rounder? Would you rather do the three-team trade, which would send a second and a third next year, plus Jamison Crowder elsewhere, or would you rather prefer mine here, which would be a 2025 second rounder and Jahan Dotson 
a very talented receiver in his own right. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. So now I want to talk about this here because, you know, earlier this week, uh, the New York Giants' uh, Hard Knocks episode came out, and they were at the NFL Combine, and of course the Giants were looking into quarterbacks this year, and they showed uh, the various interviews that these quarterbacks had with the team, with Dable, you know, trying to prod at them, trying to mentally, uh, you know, challenge them. And out of the bunch, a lot of people say that Jaden Daniels looked silly, and he looked dumb, and he wasn't getting stuff right, and he looked like he wasn't really following what Dable was saying, uh, and it just wasn't the best showing from HBO. Now, maybe the Giants, because, you know, Jaden is a division rival now, maybe they wanted him to look bad, right? It was only a couple clips, uh, but here's a, a very prominent NFL film analysis here. So Joe A. NFL, who said, this is some real bad board work by Jaden Daniels. Forgot the play, missed the read, clearly overwhelmed. Awful pro day. I mean, come on, awful pro day. That's ridiculous. Awful interviews, exceedingly old. I mean, come on now. Uh, and it all showed up on tape. How did this guy get drafted so high. So listen, man, when it comes to the clips specifically, Jaden Daniels, I mean, da I mean, Brian Dable, the Giants head coach, fed him a play uh, and told him to change up the numbers and then gave him the play call and he couldn't repeat it back to him correctly. And he asked him again later in the interview and he got it wrong again. All right. So, and then compare that to Drake May, who had an even more complicated play call than what they gave Daniels and he was following along he was quick he was sharp he was following everything that Dable was saying and people took the Twitter and they're like oh this proves Drake May is the better quarterback than Jaden Daniels and the commanders made a big mistake but I completely disagree with that man and here's why I think that Jaden Daniels is somebody uh that had his playbook and it was a very college type system last year Okay, that's just the, the fact of the matter. He didn't set protections. There are certain things that he's going to have to learn here at the NFL level if he's going to succeed as this team's quarterback. But everything that we've heard about Jaden uh, to this point from commander staff, from his teammates, is that this guy works as hard as anybody, that he's mastering the playbook. And, you know, this playbook is going to be tailored to his strengths. So coming up here, I'm actually going to break down the play that he showed Brian Dable as his favorite play and why I think it's going to be a staple in the commander's offense this year. But first, let me know. Should Washington have taken Drake May over Jaden Daniels? Simply give me a yes or a no. I know this is a big debate before the start or before the NFL draft this year. There's a lot of people that wanted Drake May. There's a lot of people that wanted Daniels. I was a Daniels person. I had him higher ranked on my board. I thought his film was better. I thought his accuracy was a lot better. Uh, but let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Yes or no, should Washington have taken Drake May? So with everything being said here, uh, you know, when it comes to <laughs> everything that happened here, it was a short clip, showed on a TV show. We don't know how we interviewed with other teams. We don't know... Uh, how the entire interview went. And for all we know, the Giants pushed this clip out there to make it seem like Jaden Daniels stinks. All right? This is the Giants we're talking about, right? So I'm not too worried about this. Adam Peters, the commander's GM, said that Jaden Daniels was the number one overall player on their board, higher than Caleb Williams, who went number one overall to the Bears. Okay? So they clearly see something in him. And obviously, Jaden Daniels did enough meeting with the commanders to convince them that he is the number one player in this entire draft class, and it seems like everything that Jaden has done in OTAs has only accentuated that fact that he is looking like the best rookie quarterback, at least to the early stages of the offseason program. So now let's break down the play, because this is what I really love to do, guys. I love watching film. Uh, everyone here at Chat Sports makes fun of me. I'm the nerd here. But you know what, man? I love this kind of stuff, and we are going to break it down. So the play call here was Gun Charlie Wright 64 House X in. Okay, and by the way, Jaden Daniels got this wrong. Uh, uh, and, and the way that it breaks down is that gun is shotgun. Charlie Wright uh, means that it's trips to the right side, and it's a single wide receiver to the left. The 64 is the protection call in Brian Dable's language. The house is the trips concept, which is a shot concept, which we'll get to here in a second. And then X in is the single wide receiver concept. Jaden said something like gun Charlie Wright. He forgot the protection. He forgot the, the concept. Uh, with the house, and he just said F in. So he got the letter wrong, he got the protection wrong, and he forgot to say the trips concept. So that was a pretty, you know, pretty big blunder there. Uh, but this is a concept here that LSU ran all the time last year, and it's where Jaden Daniels made his money. Okay, so on the right side of the play here, that's a shot concept, okay? And that is essentially a stick concept. So you see the H back right there. He's highlighted in red. 
He's got kind of a choice route. Depending on the coverage, he can stop, he can stop either way, or he can go outside. That's a stick route. Then you got the, the, the locked hitch on the outside. That's the Z right there. Uh, locked hitch, not going anywhere. Then you have this guy right here in the slot, the green dot, who's running an inside fade. So if you get one high safety and you get man coverage, you're throwing it to that guy every single time. That's an alert route, and that's usually Brian Thomas Jr. there with the LSU Tigers film. And then you get the Z all the way on the other side. And Dable's uh, playbook, he's the X, uh, that's going to run an N behind it. So if you run through that first concept, the stick's not open, or if they're not giving you uh, the inside fade, then you go to the end, which should break open at some point uh, during the coverage there, especially if it's Malik Neighbors and he was most of the time open. So the, so the play is called Gun Charlie Wright 64, House XN. Jaden Daniels did not get that right, but hopefully now that he's working with Cliff Kingsbury, he's got his language down, and this play is going to be a staple in the Washington Commanders' uh, uh, playbook. I mean, we saw the same thing with Joe Burrow, right? Joe Burrow and the LSU Tigers, back when they had their incredible season with their amazing receivers, they ran a ton of what we call 989 uh, 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 formations there where it's on the outside two nine routes which means pure goes and then in the slot you had a guy run an eight route and he had a choice route where he could stick it keep it skinny if it's one one high safety and it's cover three or he can cut over the middle of the field if it's too high safety okay so uh this is something that i think that cliff kingsbury's gonna be like this kid played this played this a lot at lsu he knows this uh kind of concept forwards backwards and sideways and i think on third and long situations uh, you're really going to see this concept quite a bit. It's going to be called something different in C Cliff Kingsbury's playbook because all these different play callers have different language. But in Brian Dable's uh, 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 terminology here, it's uh, Gun Charlie Wright 64 House XN. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now. If you're a nerd like me and you love to break down this kind of stuff and get into the nitty gritty of football, make sure you click that subscribe button right now because we got more Commander's content coming your way as we approach the 2024 campaign.